This program is brought to you by the Brennan School of Business at Dominican University, along with Professor Zach Ross. I hope you enjoy. All right, we'll go around. You guys want to tell us a little bit about what you came up with? Um, sure. So we were all, four of us were all Hispanic, all from different Latin American countries. Um, so we did it in the perspective of a Hispanic American student. Um, and our values are education, money, family, individuality, time, and productivity. So um, obviously as a student, we are here for a reason with a Hispanic background. So you know, we had to work really hard and this is been cheap for us. Um, but also education is the reason why we're here in the school. Um, it's really important for us. Um, and obviously family is very amazing for us as well. Um, time um, and being productivity for us, like your work ethic as well. Um, and then traditions, uh, we have like holidays are just not with your immediate family, but also with your extended family. Um, and like the mm-hmm. celebration, so for example, we have like the Saints Day and different things have their own days. Um, around Christmas is like the Sabbath, which is a celebration that leads to Christmas and Christmas Eve. Um, language, we have Spanish, Arabic, and English. Um, we all speak Spanish, obviously English. Um, and then um, I included Arabic because over the summer I went to Spain and Morocco, and so I took a few classes of uh, Arabic. And I really and I learned that Spanish comes from the Arabic language, so I saw a lot of the similarities. And I didn't think it was very hard to put Spanish to not Arabic. Um, and then I think overall within the country where we're going to go into a work and there's a lot of Mexican Mexicans in the city. Um, but however, as individuals, um, first as a student, we see like we're all for ourselves and like, we're doing this for us. But overall, in part of our culture, it's more collective where we take a lot of other people's emotions and feelings into mind and it affects how our business is. Okay, thanks. So, is everyone from the US in this group? Okay. All right, so we uh, next, what do you guys come back? Okay, uh, so we have a new listener one. Uh, and this is also an American, obviously, but uh, you know, this one, I'm sorry for the handwriting. So, uh, we're really family uh, kind of oriented. Uh, like, it's all about the family, it's all about like, uh, like, you know, I feel like you know, I was born and bond, like, in a bond to my dad and mom, and I had to, like, you know, work. It was in my, my life to this weekend, you know, and I hold them like, you know, I'm not a family feel, you know, about our parents. Uh, it's really strict in the Middle East, like, you know, if, if you shouldn't do nothing, if you shouldn't do something, you just don't do it. You know, you just never get to do it, you just do it. Like, from your dad, you don't know, from your mom. Uh, gender role, um, it's kind of like masculine, you know, like, like male is kind of you know kind of dominated. Uh, in my family, like my dad never really just my uh, my sister, they never said anything to them, but like we're boy, we got a, you know, we're gonna be with the dad. We got a head with the dad. And we all have like tradition, uh, you know, we never do all that. We have to stick to tradition and do like the same things every day, like all the time. Okay. Um, yeah, Middle Eastern is kind of close to Mexican culture, they're just as strict in Middle East. Because they're strict, and they're into the religion, you know, it's male dominated, you know, the materialistic culture. Um, they're very strict in terms of, you know, the mom and dad say, no. Um, and we got this money because, you know, we're Mexican American, and so it was like, we felt that in America, you know, you're more individualistic, and when you see democratic, you're going to stay. Like, you, you can talk to your parents, and maybe negotiate with them, and, you know, change your mind, and stuff like that, where you're going to tell me what you feel, and like you said. Um, it's just kind of like people more materialistic and power hungry. Um, but, you know, at the same time, it's not just negative power hungry. You can tell us that you don't grow up and find out where to create on stuff like that. We just have a lot of different people in the quality, you know. 
Is that it? All right, great. Two or three? This is more of a Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so we split it up in that Caucasian American, Saudi Arabian, and then Mexican American. Um, for Caucasian American, we came up with individualistic, so, um, you know, kind of be yourself. That's what um, my parents kind of always told me. Um, polychronic, I forgot what that word means already. Um, you don't value time too much. You can be late. Yeah, time, is, um, time isn't as um, important. You can be late and stuff. Uh, religious tolerance. Um, in the Saudi Arabian side, um, they came up with uh, collectivists. Um, so they're kind of um, time. All right, time. So your, your actions reflect the society, or reflect your culture, and make culture look bad depending on what you do. Like that, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, time. Their time is very important over there. You can't be late. Um, non-indulgence, so they don't really go out and spoil themselves as much as um, Americans might buy drinks and stuff at the bar. Um, Mexican-American, kind of similar, collectivist. Um, the difference between that, um, I guess, between Saudi Arabia and Mexican-American is the indulgence factor and, uh, you know, time is a little less strict in Mexican-American culture. Um, and then some shared values we came up with, uh, religion, you know, can or can't be important um, between all, all of us. Um, individuality, respect, family, education is always important. Um, success driven um, and male dominated, not always a shared value. Um, respect for elders, I would say is a pretty shared value. That's about it. Oh. <laughs> so for religion, uh, in terms of things like business or management, if you're in a country, an Islamic Republic, everything will be done according to Sharia law. Correct? So that's something also to consider. You know, their religion plays a significant part on how you manage people and the economic activities you do. It's not like you can just do what you want to do and make a ton of money. You will be restricted and confined to some type of parameters uh, in some way. Um, so, um, in our group, we had Greek and culture trips, and at Greek and Italian, we all had relatives that have come over within the past like, couple of decades from those countries, so it still heavily influences who we are even if we were born here. Um, so, a lot of things we value are family, food, religion, such as well. You like that specific one religion, so you have to be a group. Um, honesty, and then some of the traditions and customs, we just listed a couple of quinceaneras and um, birthday song celebrations of Jesus are different between us because we're Greek, Orthodox, and Catholic, and the Methodist religion. Um, there's different wedding celebrations, and a lot of things revolve around religion and the way that we function and how our families function because family is really important. So, one of my mother's friends, that's on his family day. So, that's something that I think we all feel very tied to is the fact that our family is important. And that goes back to how all of our cultures are kind of like those cultures. You and you kind of important to us, you know, massive. Thank you, guys. Um, the reason for doing this exercise is to understand cultural dimensions. Culture has a lot of different facets to it, and so we need to really be thinking about what are some of the most important factors within the culture so that we can make great decisions as managers working overseas, or working with people overseas. So we'll talk about six main components. Um, 
once again, one of the big people in the field is Hofstein, and he's not as much of a business guy, he's more of a psychology guy, but he deals a lot with culture and now that in America does with Hofstein. Who has that flag on the house? So we're going to talk about the six cultural dimensions. Our first cultural dimension is power systems. So this is important because we have to understand how societies work uh, when making decisions. So in terms of power, how is power distributed from region to region? Uh, we need to understand this because sometimes power is used as legitimate or for good and evil or other ways. So for example, the parents treat their children as evil. Our elders respect it. Is education centered on students? Is the hierarchy in the society does it create equality? How is the subordination in, in the society? That one's important because we need to learn how people work from the top down, how do they communicate. So we reach out to people at the lower level or the higher. Uh, obviously, the politics are huge. Is it democratic? Is it republic? Is it a religious state? Corruption. It's huge because a lot of countries people take bribes, and so that becomes like an ethical dilemma. Or you know, are you getting, are you conforming within the context of the culture, or are you overstepping your boundaries and the policies of your country, or as a manager, or whatnot? So that's where your pretty much your own personal moral ethics comes into. So these right here, actually, this is small power systems. Over here is large. This creates gaps of power. This is very small gaps of power. So when you, you know, children respect the parents. Um, actually, no. Children and parents are similar. They treat each other as equal in certain contexts. Elders are very respected very little. So a large power distance create huge gaps. So over here with the gaps is the teacher centered education. The students don't really count. The 
that you show up in a single frame. The hierarchy in this society has huge inequality. Subordinates in the society are expected to do what they're told to do. Politics here are unstable. Meaning that there's always huge revolutions going on and things are always changing. <laughs> Uneven uh, income distribution. And the religions in this country have a hierarchy of leadership. So, for example, I mean, we've gone to a lot of predominantly Catholic countries such as Poland and the respect for the Pope uh, is very high. It's going to impact a lot of your decision making in terms of their religious beliefs. Same could be said for a lot of Islamic countries where they have beliefs, things of that nature. Those people are normally center down on what you know should be done within the country on, on top of so the politics would evolve around the religion itself. Make sure everybody got that. Now also, you guys, I'm gonna record the lecture so you can always go back and look at them on campus to make it easy. Wow. The second part of uh, cultural dimensions deals with risks. How do a particular culture or society perceive and handles risks? Psychology, they relate this to uh, classes at 115. We'll finish just the second part. Uh, in psychology, they're related to, to uncertainty avoidance. How do people either avoid uncertainty or move towards uncertainty? Hence, risk. So on the weak uncertainty of voice, um, it's acceptable as everyday life. So 
people try to move away from it, from it basically. People feel like they're at ease and have low stress. More self control. These people tend to have a higher score of health. Terms of um, lifespan, longevity, diseases, etc. Uh, these people are comfortable with ambiguity and chaos. Changing jobs in this culture is no problem. These people dislike rules. Equal politics. People don't like to have a voice and they, they can restrain the uh, political groups. So, in a strong uncertainty of wood in society, risk is seen as a threat. These people need clarity and structure at all times. The teachers are supposed to have all the answers. These people have unequal politics, meaning that their political leaders are the people who have all the answers and that you know, their voices really don't count. So we're going to start out with these two cultural dimensions. We'll, we'll carry on next class with, uh, there's four more to talk about. And I will email you guys uh, about chapter one. So hopefully you can read chapter one by Thursday. We'll go over that a little bit. And we could talk more about um, some of the articles. That I've been. Yeah, if you finish the student background sheet, you can give them to me. If not, maybe just bring it in Thursday.
try to kind of know each person and background stuff like that.